So how does GTO help us in practice? Should we try to implement a theoretically optimal strategy? Like so many other questions in life, the answer is, it depends. There are times when our best shot at maximizing profit is obeying certain theoretical principles. There are also occasions where we should ignore these principles altogether. The majority of streets in No Limit Hold'em take place across a set of 52 million possible five card runouts. The more streets that are left to play in a given hand, the more it benefits us to understand optimal strategy. We want to keep our options open later in the hand in order to maximize our potential EV gain. For example, a player who limps preflop with a high frequency is limiting the amount of bluffs they can have later in the hand because their preflop limp removes many strong combos from their range. And as we know, if you're missing strong combos, you can't bluff. Alternatively, a player who raises every single hand preflop and always bets the flop when checked to has limited value later in the hand because they're aggressive with too many bad hands. How we play on earlier streets heavily influences the options we have on the turn and river, and since these later streets are when the pots get bigger and more important, our preflop and flop strategy should be well-rounded. But as a hand progresses, it becomes harder and harder to decipher what is theoretically optimal. We can't memorize, learn, or practice a perfect approach for every possible turn and river card on every board in every formation. If we want to maximize our EV in these spots, we have to adapt on the fly. The best way to do this is by capitalizing on our opponent's mistakes, also known as exploitative play. Our long-term goal should be to understand the game so well that we can pinpoint and exploit our opponent's potential mistakes in every hand we play. There will be more on that in Lesson C. The reason we can't skip ahead and disregard GTO altogether is that we don't even know what a mistake is without some concept of optimal strategy. Sure, we can confidently assume that a player who always folds the river is making a mistake by doing so. Same for a player who never folds the river. But what about somebody in between? Are they folding the river the right amount? Or should they be calling slightly more or slightly less? We cannot answer these questions without some sort of baseline to work from. An understanding of theoretically optimal strategies is pivotal to poker success, even if our ability to accurately implement them is a work in progress.